Only one photo was ever taken of Jose Diaz. It was in 1942 when he was 22 years old. A week later, he was killed. The Los Angeles Police Department blamed his death on gang violence and arrested 600 Mexican-Americans. These arrests and the media coverage that followed set off one of the biggest reported cases of racial attacks and racial violence in California's history and became known as the Zoot Suit Riots. Jose Diaz was born in Durango, Mexico on December 19, 1919. Four years later, Diaz's family joined thousands of Mexicans who were immigrating to the United States to escape the violence of the Mexican Revolution. Hoping to find better job opportunities, Diaz's parents moved the family to East Los Angeles to a predominantly Mexican-American neighborhood. They found housing on a ranch where other families also lived and worked as farm workers. It was common at that time for entire families to work on a ranch to support the household. Diaz's brother and sister worked alongside his parents on the ranch. And after the eighth grade, Diaz dropped out of high school to also work. Diaz's siblings described him as being a hard worker who was quiet and reserved but they also said he enjoyed having fun. He loved jazz music and would go to dances on the weekend. In the 1940s, jazz was one of the most popular genres of music, and wearing a zoot suit was a popular style of dressing among black and Mexican teenagers. The style originated in jazz clubs in New York and eventually made its way to the West Coast. The zoot suit was a suit with high-waisted, wide-leg pants that were pegged at the bottom and a long coat sometimes down to the knees. But those outside the black and Mexican communities didn't appreciate the style of a zoot suit. It was the 40s during World War II and resources in the U.S. were limited. People in support of the war said the zoot suit was unpatriotic because it used too much fabric, taking resources away from soldiers' uniforms. The suits were also used as a way to stereotype anyone who wore one. If you were Mexican, wearing a zoot suit in Los Angeles, People from white communities and the police automatically considered you a thug, or a delinquent hoodlum, as they called it. But for those who wore them, it was just a way to celebrate their freedom of choice. And when Jose Diaz and his friends would dress up to go to a party or a dance, they would all wear zoot suits. On August 1st, 1942, there was a party being thrown for a girl who lived on the same ranch as Diaz. The party was being held in a small house near the Sleepy Lagoon side of the ranch. The Sleepy Lagoon was the nickname for a reservoir that was used to water crops on the ranch. The large body of water was also used for swimming or as a hangout, mostly by Mexican kids who because of segregation were denied access to city-owned swimming pools. The party on the ranch that Saturday night was within walking distance of the Sleepy Lagoon. Jose Diaz was going to the party to celebrate his friend's birthday, but he also had another reason to celebrate. A few months earlier, Diaz had enlisted in the U.S. Army. His family said he was excited for the opportunity, and because he'd be leaving town, his mother sent him to get his picture taken. It's the only photo ever taken of him. Diaz was scheduled to report to boot camp the day after the party. The same night of the party, Hank Levas, who also lived in East Los Angeles, decided to drive out to the Sleepy Lagoon with his girlfriend. Levas and his girlfriend didn't live on the ranch, but they wanted to go somewhere quiet to spend some alone time together. While the two were parked in their car, a group of guys pulled up alongside. They pulled Levas out of the car and jumped him, beating him and then his girlfriend. Immediately after, Hank Levas wanted revenge. He went back to his neighborhood and got a group of his friends. They drove back to the Sleepy Lagoon to look for the guys who had jumped him. But by the time they got there, it was after midnight and there was no one around. They heard party music coming from a small house nearby. It was the same house Diaz went to to celebrate his friend's birthday. Hank Levez and the guys he brought with him assumed that whoever had jumped him was at that house. So they walked in the party and started swinging on whoever they saw. This created a brawl that lasted 10 minutes before being broke up. Levez and his friends ran from the party, jumped in their car, and left. The next morning, Jose Diaz was found laying in the street, badly beaten, stabbed twice, and near death. Hours later, he died at the hospital. 
He was 22 years old. The LAPD and the media wasted no time using Diaz's death to further negative stereotypes about the Mexican-American community, which most white people in Southern California at the time feared and believed was filled with dangerous and violent criminals. The Los Angeles Examiner reported that the LA Sheriff's Office made public statements saying that Mexican people had a total disregard for human life and a biological tendency to be violent. At a time when racial tension was already high, the media and police statements like this only added to racial prejudice, to the point where LA police were arresting as many young people of Mexican descent as they could. Under orders to find Jose Diaz's murderer, the LAPD arrested 600 Mexican Americans between the ages of 12 and 25, and many of them were wearing a zoot suit when they were arrested. Out of the 600 men arrested, 22 were charged with the murder of Jose Diaz, including Hank Leves. Two months later, their trial began, and they were all tried together. But the trial became less about proving Diaz's killers were guilty and more about trying to prove to the world that Mexican people were dangerous. The defense lawyer for the men and boys on trial requested the defendants get haircuts and clean up for court, but the judge denied the request and stated that with their hairstyles changed, they could look less threatening, which might confuse the jurors. The judge also required that the men wear their zoot suits every day in court for the entire length of the trial so that the public could see what criminals wear. During the trial, the prosecution claimed that all the men involved in Diaz's murder belonged to the 38th Street Gang in Los Angeles. Some of the defendants admitted to being gang members. Others denied it. But what they all agreed on was that there was a fight that night at the party but that none of them had killed Jose Diaz. And prosecutors couldn't produce any evidence to prove otherwise. But after a three month trial, 17 of the 22 defendants were still found guilty. Three of them, Hank Levas included, received life sentences without parole. Levas, a 17 year old girlfriend, and seven girlfriends of the other men were also arrested. But because they chose not to cooperate with police, they were all taken out of their family's custody and put in reform school until their 21st birthdays. And the killing of Jose Diaz was dubbed by newspapers as the Sleepy Lagoon Murder. Five months after the trial, the public's opinion of people wearing zoot suits had only gotten worse. That opinion extended into the military, where the majority of military personnel also believed that young Mexican-Americans were criminals, and all the newspaper reports of the Sleepy Lagoon murderers confirmed their beliefs. So when 50,000 military servicemen were stationed throughout Southern California during World War II, the harassment towards men wearing zoot suits escalated. In May of 1943, 12 sailors who were stationed on shore and going to a bar in downtown LA were walking towards a crowd of women to talk to them. They passed a group of men who were wearing zoot suits. One of the sailors, feeling threatened, grabbed one of the men's arms. The man responded by knocking the sailor out. After a quick fight involving both sides, the sailors ran back to their base. When word of the fight got around to other servicemen, the sailors decided to plan an attack in retaliation. Three days later, 50 sailors with makeshift weapons left their base and started going from neighborhood to neighborhood searching for anyone wearing a zoot suit. The sailors went into restaurants and movie theaters. They dragged people out onto the streets, beating them, ripping off their zoot suits, and urinating on or burning the suits. People as young as 12 years old were beaten, and police did nothing. Two days later, the violence continued on. Sailors from nearby states even came to California to join the attacks. Thousands of military men walked the streets of Los Angeles looking for anyone to attack. And when they couldn't find anyone wearing a zoot suit, they'd attack anyone they could find who wasn't white. Eventually, members of the Mexican-American community organized and fought back, jumping sailors as soon as they entered the neighborhoods. This race rioting went on for a full five days, and still the police did nothing. 
It wasn't until the military realized that the city of Los Angeles had no plans on stopping the violence that they stepped in. The military ordered all sailors back on base and declared LA off limits to all servicemen. The very next day, LA City Council banned the wearing of zoot suits on Los Angeles streets, a ban that was punishable by a 30-day jail sentence. The Zoot Suit Riots is what the five days of fighting became known as, and it was the worst reported race riot in California's history. Hundreds of Mexican Americans were hospitalized and arrested, and although there were sailors hospitalized, not one sailor was arrested. As the rioting came to an end, the 17 men convicted of killing Jose Diaz still sat in a San Quentin prison cell, and they stayed there for two years. But even though they were found guilty, there were some people like wealthy celebrities who believed they were innocent and had received an unfair trial. These celebrities hired a new defense team for the men, and in October of 1944, almost two years exactly since the day they were arrested, their convictions were reversed on appeal. They were declared innocent, and they all walked out of prison. And the case of Jose Diaz's murder remained unsolved for over 40 years. That was until one of the women who was at the party on the ranch that night in 1942 made a confession shortly before her death. The woman made the confession to her daughter. And in a 2002 PBS documentary titled Zoot Suit Riots, it was revealed that the woman's brother was the one who had killed Jose Diaz. And he was not one of the 17 men who were convicted. The boy had been at the same party as Diaz, but was thrown out for causing problems. Angry, he waited outside until the party was over. Then, as Diaz walked home, the woman's brother jumped him, stabbing him twice. The woman explained that she had kept the secret to protect her brother, a secret that may or may not have been the reason her brother committed suicide years after the murder. Today, the ranch where Jose Diaz lived and the Sleepy Lagoon Reservoir where he died are both long gone. But his memory and the story of the Zoot Suit Riots will be a part of history forever. <laughs>